Philadelphia skyline is proving deadly for migrating birds with more than 1,000 of them discovered along Center City sidewalks recently. Action News' Gray Hall is live in the newsroom with details about what's happening there. Uh, Gray, quite a bizarre scene there. Conservationists in Philadelphia believe up to 1,500 birds died in a single day after flying into Philadelphia skyscrapers. Stephen Macy Juski collects fallen birds around the city. Sunday, October 2nd, Macy Juski says he collected far more birds than a typical day. He tells CNN he's never seen anything like it. Macy Juski, along with several other volunteers, collected around 400 birds. Most were dead, some were injured. This is not something that should happen. Hundreds and hundreds of migratory birds found injured or dead in Center City, Philadelphia. Just looking at all these little dead bodies, it's like looking at babies, you know, that are lying there about to die and it really affects you. Keith Russell with Audubon, Pennsylvania says this mass casualty happened October 2nd. He says it was a perfect storm of weather conditions that first led those birds into danger. Then they were attracted to the lights and those skyscrapers, but underwear, the glass would stop their path. We expected to have a large migration but we did not expect birds to crash into buildings in the numbers that they did. Russell says birds collide with buildings on a daily basis and especially during migration season, but not on this scale. His team collected at least 400 of the mostly songbirds, but suspects there are hundreds or thousands more that were injured or that died. He tells Action News the last time something on this scale happened was back in 1948 when a flock of birds slammed into the PSFS building. Um, the conditions just happened to be right and the birds just happened to be there and everything lined up for something like this to happen. If we lose our, our birds, um, they're sort of the immune system of, of nature. If they're not there eating insects and controlling diseases and doing other things, we're going to have calamities. Shifting our focus to Russia now, fears of a possible environmental catastrophe in Russia's Far East has started to mount after locals reported finding dozens of dead sea animals washed onto the beach from the Pacific Ocean. Recent footages by Russian media showed a beach in the region on Monday carpeted with dead marine molluscs and including sea urchins, octopi and starfish. This is how the Kamchatka Peninsula looks like now. Hundreds of lifeless sea creatures and fish have washed up on the Pacific coast. Surfers, among whom Kalachtir Beach is highly popular, say that they started to spot dead marine animals almost a month ago. I've seen some dead fish on the shore and some dead shellfish, but not in the amounts like you've probably seen on some user videos. Uh, like they were a little bit scattered around the beach. They were like selected. Uh, dead fish there, but not like piles of uh, dead sea lions or something like that. I didn't see any big sea animals. I've talked to some surfers, both locals and visitors, and they confirmed that uh, something was in the water and it hurt their eyes. Scientists said that nearly all marine life on the seabed of the Avacha Bay has been killed, with only a small number of large fish and shrimp and crabs surviving. The scientists believe that the contaminated area is much larger than the parts that they have examined. They also stated that the remaining marine life is under threat due to lack of any food left for them to survive on. Kamchatka's local government assures that all the authorities, law enforcement bodies, scientists and volunteers have been involved in the search for the source of pollution. Local authorities have admitted that the level of pollution of the water is higher than normal value. However, the exact cause of the death is not yet known. And it started uh, three weeks ago. So definitely something happened here, but we don't know when it started. We don't know the scale of the disaster and we don't know what has caused it. A smelly problem plaguing a neighborhood in Agoura Hills. Hundreds of dead fish floating in a Lake Lindero. Could the wildfires have something to do with it? I would as news reporter Sid Garcia has more as neighbors try to get to the bottom of things. Lake Lindero is a lakeside community in Agoura Hills with the fish story to tell. No, not about the one that got away. It's the hundreds that are floating around dead in the water and the smell. It's horrendous. The neighbors are up in arms. Uh, my friend's wife is in tears. She spent all this money for her house and she can't enjoy it. She can't open her windows. 
she and some of her neighbors are wondering why all of these dead fish are now floating around their lake. The homeowners association has hired a company to test the water to find out why the fish are dying off. An educated guest from the HOA board, an algae outbreak or the devices that create oxygen for the fish are now working or both. Today, one of the board members was out scooping up the dead fish, waiting to hear back from the company that's testing the water. He tells me State Fish and Wildlife offered their theory. Probably um, uh, soot coming from the fires, um, which is, you know, but it goes upstream because uh, they're having lots of reports of uh, the, um, the ash that suffocates the fish, but, um, but all this is yet to be determined right at this point. So while they wait for the test results to find out what exactly is killing the fish, Well, for Biscayne Bay, dozens of fish were found today either gasping for breath or already dead. So reports began coming in early this morning just before sunrise. Dozens of dead fish washing up on the shores from as far north as the Holliver Inlet here at North Bay Village, even as far south as the Venetian Islands. And while not as massive as the fish kill we saw back in August, scientists fear we could be on the precipice of yet another catastrophic event on Biscayne Bay. Schools of mullet gasping for breath on the bay waters off Albert Pallet Park in Miami. It was like a dead fish on the wall and a lot of fishes like trying to breathe like they don't have enough oxygen, oxygen in the world. Saturday morning, what's become an all too familiar scene. Dozens of dead fish floating on the bay from the Holliver Inlet to North Bay Village and south to the Venetian Causeway. About 11 o'clock last night, oxygen dropped super fast between 6 o'clock and 11 o'clock last night. I mean, just like a pulse of something sucking the oxygen out of the water. It was low oxygen levels that caused the unprecedented fish kill in Biscayne Bay back in August when we saw thousands of dead fish and other marine life floating on the waters and washing up on the shores for days. But unlike last time, water temperatures Saturday were normal and circulation in the bay was better. Again, this just another indication that our bay is in crisis. Bringing up the latest now in Hurricane Delta, it has slammed into Mexico and made landfall just moments ago as a category The state of Louisiana is under a state of emergency as Hurricane Delta barrels across the Gulf of Mexico. Delta could make landfall again Friday evening as a Tony, good morning to you. Welcome to Cajun country, my hometown. We are used to hurricanes happening here. But what's different about this is it could be a repeat. Hurricane Delta is as of now projected to make landfall within 15 to 20 miles from where Hurricane Laura made landfall just six weeks ago in Lake Charles. And Tony, you were there for it. That would be incredible if the same people devastated by Laura get hit yet again. But let's start with what Delta did in Mexico. Overnight, Hurricane Delta slamming into Mexico. The storm intensified from a tropical depression to a Category 4 hurricane in just over 36 hours. Trapping many Americans there on vacation. In nearby Cancun, daylight revealing down power lines, massive debris and trees toppled onto cars. The mayor of Cancun spoke about fallen trees and utility poles that were down, which made the roads impassable. Around 266,000 customers had lost power. Riding out Hurricane Delta at a packed shelter in Playa del Carmen as the storm slammed Mexico with 110 mile per hour winds. Two in five of the world's plant species are at risk of extinction, and scientists now say they're in a race against time to identify new species before they disappear forever. That warning was echoed by Prince Charles at a UN summit on biodiversity, also attended virtually by the Chinese president. The plant kingdom is not just a thing of beauty. Its untapped and diminishing potential is highlighted in a study by London's Kew Gardens. Collating the work of scientists around the world, they estimate 40% of plant species are at risk of extinction. Hundreds of medicinal plants, including some kinds of aloe, are threatened, and only a tiny fraction of plants, like the water hyacinth, are being used for food and fuel. 
the attention that's being drawn to biodiversity loss at high levels across the world, I think is a really positive thing. And this report will provide those decision makers, but also individuals at home, with new information and more information on making better decisions about conserving the diversity of plants and fungi. It's a sign of the times that biodiversity is a big political issue and now firmly on the international agenda. Conservation officials are sounding the alarm over a mysterious trend in the U.S. Southwest. Well, researchers say that they started finding these birds around August 20th near White Sands. And since then, they've started seeing more and more dead birds across the state. Researchers say this could be for several reasons, from wildfires to the change in weather patterns. Yeah, it is very shocking and it's heartbreaking. One by one, hundreds and thousands of migratory birds are being found dead. In New Mexico.